This episode of the Extreme Ag Show is presented by Concept Agritech. Cowboy is the game changer, getting it in through the leaf and into the plant circulatory system. That's why this product is so effective at delivering both calcium and boron to plants at critical times when they need it the most. It's early morning at Matt Miles' farm. The tensions are high. In just a few hours, Matt will go check on some early planted soybeans, where just a few days before, torrential rains flooded his field, possibly killing the entire crop. The water is gone. The question now is, did it take the beans with it? That's dancing a jig from what we just seen. So, I want y'all to look at this. This is my ADS pattern tile drain field, planted flat on clay. The biggest no-no you can do is try to plant beans flat on clay. This field was underwater last week, probably at least 50, a minimum of 50 hours, maybe 60 hours. I come out here when it was a foot and a half underwater and I basically wanted to puke but where I'm standing right now was probably pretty close. To, yeah, it might not be knee high, probably a foot and a half, something like that deep right here in water, all the way up to the front of the field where the well is. So man, you talking about a fella that's happy? I'm happy. You can see green lines all through here. I don't, I hadn't stand counted any, and but I'm gonna say there's 120 to 130,000 seeds out here. Now I did plant it at 160,000, just because of what I was doing. I could have planted at 140 and still had 90 up, which is plenty for your full yield potential. So I'm one jacked up dude right now. You can see here where the tractor sponge, so where the tractor sponge is here, these, this actually made its own bed because this ground is so spongy. I mean, look, you can tell where I'm walking. It looks dry on top, but I mean, I could sit here and do this and end up with, a, with water coming out of there. So you see, this is basically mud with about a quarter inch of crust on top of it. You know, black soils in the Midwest are really good soils. Black soils here, that's what we're looking at for black soils here. Look at my knife. That's what your boots look like when you walk out here and it's a little bit mucky. Try to clean your knife off now. That's pretty much not gonna happen. You see, I scraped it off all I could and I can't get any more off. Now it's all on my hands like glue. We will definitely not be cutting any bologna sandwiches with this knife today unless we want a gumbo dirt taste to it. So come out here Monday, all the, the four rows under the tractor, I started seeing green lines and, I, and then outside the tractor, like where I'm at here in this really flat ground, nothing. And I thought, well, Monday, Tuesday, went three days later, we've had pretty decent weather, come out here and it's a full stand. Now, I hadn't been all over the field. I come in the lower end because I wanted to be disgusted right off the bat. Like I said, I ain't looked the whole field, but I can just about guarantee if these beans are up where we're standing right now, then they'll be up anywhere. I'm truly blessed today. Amino Grow is an exciting new product put out by Concept Agritech. What we've seen is an increase in fruiting sites as well as branching, and this has equated to yield. Spot less. Introducing the cleanup for tar spot, gray leaf spot, southern rust, and more. Novel next generation at Astrio fungicide from FMC broadens your spectrum and strengthens your residual foliar disease control. Protect your corn fields with a proprietary combination of three modes of action. Visit your FMC retailer or at astrio.ag.fmc.com to clean up this season. Introducing Demco's newest dual auger grain cart design. Now equipped with the front folding auger and available in right side or left side unload options. Featuring Demco's corner auger design for optimal visibility. With a 22 inch vertical auger, unload at speeds of 600 bushels per minute. Demco, 
Outpace harvest time every time. Some farmers I know swear by a name. Say they'd never operate anything else. Well, here are a few names for my Fent 900 tractor. Fuel saver. Time maximizer. Game changer. I like those names. BioHealth is a product by Concept Agritech made up of a consortium of beneficial biology that actually colonize the plant and boost the plant's immune system from the inside. It's no secret that life on the farm starts early. It always has. And for Lane Miles, that's every morning. Today starts like most others, with the team gathering at the office. They've got to work together to fend off one of their biggest challenges, the heat. The first order of business, check the irrigation. It sounds simple, until you realize they're doing it for 12,000 acres. And we've got uh, somewhere around 150 wells. Everybody has a certain amount of wells every morning during the summer, during the irrigation. A lot of times, not just making sure that our wells are still running, but making sure that a deer ain't stepped on it. And, and if a deer steps on it, you'll get a hole, you know, that big. If coyote bites, uh, just a defaulty pipe that is blown up, somebody's set their well with too much pressure on it, blows it up. So just making sure there's nothing wrong. Unlike the soil in the Midwest, the soil in Southeast Arkansas does not hold water for very long. So if something goes wrong, a drought could be days away. We will tell you we are 14 days away from a drought at any point in time. I mean, it's, it's Wednesday. We got a rain on Saturday and we're looking at having to start irrigating probably by the end of the week. Which we started laying pipe last week, you know, trying to be ahead. Rice has got to have water a little bit quicker. The misconception with rice is rice has to always be flooded. It, the hard, hardest thing to do is kill grass in a grass crop. Rice we got to keep wet because our cheapest weed control is wet soils. And speaking of rice and water, Miles Farms has a unique and sustainable way of keeping their fields watered. What this is is a 60 acre reservoir that captures water from the runoff of our farm, puts it back in here so we can reuse it again. One cool thing about this farm is 100%, every gallon of this water that we have on this farm, we actually conserve and do not let leave the farm. The only way that water leaves this farm is if this reservoir is completely full, the ditches are completely full, and we get a major weather event, a lot of rain or something that we can't take it in because we don't have any room left some of this water will actually leave the farm. But other than that, we keep 100% of it here in, the, in these storage tanks and ditches to be able to reuse multiple times. 80% of our farm is watered out of this reservoir. We do have a couple of groundwater wells in places that we can't get this water to. We're actually working on a project now to be able to be the 100% of the farm be solely watered out of surface water. Yeah, it's probably one of the least environmental impacted farms we have. We'll reuse this water two to three to four times depending on how much rain we get. Then when we get in, in situations where it's dry and we have to use this water, we actually gravity flow this water back out on the fields. No pumping costs, no diesel usage, just straight up gravity flow. Gets it back in the fields, gets it level to where it needs to be. And until evaporation takes over, we won't use it again. The old way of watering rice was always to keep six, eight inches of water, you know, a flood on your field all the time. We've learned that you can actually do a process called alternate wetting and drying, where you'll flood your field up, you know, get it full wherever your desired level is, and then actually let evaporation take control, get it back down to what we call muddy. Uh, there'll still be a little bit, you know, you walk across it, you'll have a little tackiness on your shoes and then we'll, we'll put another uh, flood back on it then. That probably saves us, 
I don't know, 30% water. This farm in general, I think Lane and them did the numbers not too long ago. It's like 40 to 50% water savings over a conventional uh, contoured levee rice farm. So uh, between that and our water sensors and our computers and stuff that show us where our levels are, we know we track every gallon of water that goes out of this reservoir and every gallon of water that comes back into this reservoir. So we have, you know, data on the on the savings. We're not just kind of shooting from the hip that, hey, we're saving this much water. We've got the we've got the data to prove it. So pretty exciting to be able to do this, um, especially on a rice farm. You know, I'm I'm kind of partial to rice, so uh, we're happy with what we got. adding Raytheon into your infer application or even an over-the-top application ground V3, V4 can do wonders in helping that plant navigate tough soil conditions as far as nutrient tie-up is concerned. Control the toughest weeds with overlapping residuals. Lock in the longest lasting control for your soybean fields. Authority brand herbicides such as Authority Edge Herbicide and Authority Supreme Herbicide combine the industry's most effective Group 14 and 15 active ingredients for a clean start and long-lasting residual control. Following up 14 to 28 days later with a post-application of Anthem Max Herbicide through V6 establishes a heavy-duty, economical, overlapping residual program. Claims are good and all, but I'm more interested in results. My Fent Momentum planter delivers them. The only planter with automatic tire pressure adjustments, weight transfer across its frame, and inline center tandem wheels that eliminate intros. It's just another way I know Fent's got my bottom line top of mind. Sweet success has been in the product lineup of Concept Agritech for a while. We've seen it do a lot of things that you wouldn't think a blackstrap molasses product would do. Anytime you can increase the bricks content of your plant, the more healthy it's gonna be. Farms in America are mostly passed down from one generation to another. Very few start from nothing, but that doesn't mean that each new generation has it handed to them. Every year, every season, brings new challenges, as Kevin Matthews can attest to. So we are a fourth generation farm, but my freshman year of high school, Dad and him uh, decided the grading company was so much better for them, they sold the farm and reduced it down to about 600 acres of land and kept a couple old pieces of equipment. But then uh, I rented 30 acres in high school and then rented another neighbor. I talked him into renting 10 acres from. So we rented that bottom for about two years and he said, well, you know, you proved yourself that I'm gonna let you rent the rest of the farm. So I rented that and so that got my acres on up and then um, I would trade equipment for labor. So I would do the work on theirs so I could use their equipment to farm my land. Cause I didn't have nothing. It was uh, early nineties. We was in a time that grain prices was really dirt cheap and nobody wanted to farm. I mean, it was just wasn't good times. Then opportunities come. I was heavily involved in grain boards. I surrounded myself with some of the best farmers in the state. That's been a huge thing to our growth. Then um, as farmers wanted to retire and didn't have, nobody wanted to take the farms over, then it got offered to me and we just kept growing and we was at 3,000 acres and then we actually got up to over 7,000 acres at one time. But I was fortunate because we always stayed with one bank the whole time. I'd been with that same lender since I was 16 years old. Well, life was good and then um, in uh, 2016, and you know, they decided to, to sell the bank. And when they came in, uh, in our little office, the guy stood in the doorway and he, he introduced himself with a bank. And he said, um, just wanted to get right to the point. They didn't want no part of agriculture. And the sooner that I could get all my accounts out of their bank and they not deal with us, the better off we both will be. And um, we want you to liquidate all your accounts with us. Didn't really know what to say. <laughs> 
you know, we had everything with them, all of our real estate, you know, everything we owned that had any mortgages was tied with them except for our equipment, which was with John Deere. Probably some of the worst news you ever heard, and it was bad. I mean, you lay in bed at night, and you didn't know if you was going to get to lay in that bed a week from now. You didn't know if they was going to come sell your house or what they was going to do. So here we're in 2023 now, and it took um, basically to about 2019 to get that. Well, during that process, we was um, got hit with three hurricanes. It was ugly. We got crop insurance, but the crop insurance is only going to pay 60, 70 percent of what your historical averages are. So you're still that's a 30 percent loss. So it's not like it's a great thing. It's just a band aid to keep you from going deeper in debt. And uh, it was it was rough. It wasn't just awful bad. But then 2020. We get another, we get, we get the granddaddy. And then we get the 500 year flood and we get it all and it was, it was bad. I mean, it, it was just ugly. 868 acres underwater. Tassels of corn had, you know, 20, 30, they was 20, 30 foot underwater. I mean, we had water lines on fields up in the trees. It was 50, 60 foot in the air. And you just can't imagine that much water and roads that was impassable. It, it was bad, and um, but you know we hung in there. Luckily, things got better. We got refinanced. Our interest rates was cut tremendously down. I had so many friends that come to me and loan me money and believed in me. If it, um, you know, that's what done it. No, but if it hadn't been for the friends and people helping, we'd have never survived. Never. And it was it was the grace of God. Ain't no doubt. And here we are, 2023, probably some of the best financial shape we've ever been in. So, my, how things can change. Go long for season-long foliar disease protection that starts at plant. Active ingredient Flutriafol moves through your corn plants as they grow for inside-out protection from roots to tassel. A single at-plant application provides comparable performance in corn yield protection to that of VTR1 foliar fungicides against diseases like gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blight, common rust, and more. Some farmers I know swear by a name, say they'd never operate anything else. Well, here are a few names for my Fent 900 tractor. Fuel saver, time maximizer, game changer. I like those names. Gail, you showed up on the perfect day with the Adastrial trial, because now we can come down here and see where they're putting in your Zyway trial on corn. Mm -hmm. But uh, in another few days, we'll be putting your Zyway trial in on soybeans. Do you think that's going to go okay? 
Yeah, I think that'll be a, a neat and an exciting uh, trial for you. You know, like I said, in the last year or so, we've expanded that label to include some other crops, soybeans being one of those. And, and what we're kind of looking for in soybeans is just kind of improving that overall health. You know, we're, we're looking for, our, for, for things like septoria brown spot disease control. And frog eye leaf spot control has looked really good with it. But a lot of times in soybeans, you know, you, you get later in the season, you start to see that yellowing in the lower part of the canopy. And that's a lot of times that's septoria. If we can keep that plant a little healthier, lower in the canopy, maybe hopefully retain a few more pods on a few more nodes. Because when you think about it, you know, just one more pod to the acre on, at a normal population is roughly about two bushel an acre. So right. it doesn't take much to add some yield to soybeans. And so that's really what we're kind of looking for in Zyway. And hopefully we're going to see that on your trial this year. You know, Evans and I have been on this plant health journey, if you will, you know, right. and you've been a big part of that with Zyway. You know, that first year was Zyway and the things I could see from a half mile away. And uh, I was sold from then on. Right. And increasing the plant health in soybeans is, is a huge thing for me. I think that there's more low hanging fruit, if you will, in soybeans than there is corn. If I can keep the plant healthier, you're right, maintaining pods. And that's stress and health. Yeah. I think we've got a lot of fertility out here. We're finding fertility later and later in soybeans is helping, yep. but I got to keep the plant healthy and I got to keep the stress off it. And if Zyway works as good for us in soybeans as corn, I think we're going to see a nice yield bump. One of the things we're trying to do in, in ag, and, and especially, you know, we talk about Zyway and maybe some of the other things, Zero and R, some of our other things, is, is really try to enhance so-called that factory, that plant, that plant's ability to produce more yield. Yep. And so we're looking at building a stronger root mass. And, and so we've seen some of those benefits with, with that, with Zyway and corn, where we're enhancing that root mass, helping with moisture uptake and drought stress and nutrient uptake. And so, uh, you know, we're hoping for, for those similar sorts of things in soybeans. If we can build a, a healthier, a bigger root system that can support a, a more robust plant, then hopefully we can, we can sustain more pods and put more yield into that plant at the end of the season. Well, I'm excited for both trials this year, Gail. And uh, when we're harvesting the corn and the soybeans, I hope you come back to see what happens. Well, I'm hoping I can, I'll be able to do that too. And like I said, we'll see what the results look like and, and looking for favorable things from the trials. All right. It changes everything. So says Indiana corn grower Nathan Davis about innovative Zyway LFR fungicide from FMC. Zyway brand fungicides are the first and only at plant corn fungicides to provide unprecedented season long inside out foliar disease protection. Precision is understanding the potential hidden within. Decoding the specific nutritional needs of your crop. Maximizing every nutrient and getting the most out of your yield. We break down the science in a way that works for your crops and for you. Apply less and expect more with Precision Crop Nutrition from Agro Liquid. So phosphorus to me is a very important nutrient. If you look at the photosynthetic cycle within a plant, which all these plants, corn, so I don't care what you're doing, even the plants, the weeds on the ground here in front of me, all use sunlight to convert to energy for their life. So phosphorus grows roots, builds energy, right? So we need that in that plant and we also need it because most of the times in the early season, that's a cool wet environment. That's when you can get the purpling. It's harder to pull phosphorus up at the beginning than it is any other time. Now, us out here where I am, out here in Maryland, we have a nutrient management plan, so I only get to put on a certain amount of phosphorus, so what I do is I put some of it up front, just enough to get me by, to get me going, build that root system, get a plant full of energy, and start building those roots around. So I'm trying to build that into that plant, but I'm not going to put all of it up front. Keep in mind, 75% of the needs of phosphorus in a plant's life are in the reproductive stages and sometimes phosphorus, phosphorus ain't very mobile in the soil to begin with. Plant has to go search for it, and it can get tied up pretty easily. Calcium, iron, aluminum can all bond because of the charges to phosphorus. So we're trying to find ways to make it more available. We make sure we have enough phosphorus by testing it. Uh, so we'll do test, tissue testing, soil testing. We wanna know how much the soil's given us and how much the plant's taken up. That's what we focus on with phosphorus, is making it more plant available when we need it, which is late season typically. Purpling this late, late season like that, that can be a real bad 
yield robber in my mind. 75% of its needs are in the reproduction. And let's be honest, guys, you gotta remember something. We're building these plants. They don't need to be super sexy all the time, especially in the vegetative stages, because we're not selling vegetation. We're not selling biomass. We are selling grain. And that phosphorus gets fed right into that. We're trading nutrients that we put on for pounds we put into that, that ear. To me, from what I've seen, a lot of other deficiencies mask, can mask each other. So we really rely on our sampling to tell us where we're at. Because sometimes I get a tissue sample and the plant looks gorgeous and green, but our phosphorus is low. And then we can have a great plant, but our ears aren't feeling like they want to. And that's phosphorus related as well. What you'll see in a corn crop like, you know, like mine behind us, this corn is actually at 2,500 GDUs right now still black green, still doesn't show any deficiencies. So that means that I've met all my requirements all the way through the season. That's a good thing about spoon feeding. We have these abilities to do that. That's why I spoon feed phosphorus and that's how I'm gonna use it. On the next Extreme Ag Show, we're a foot and a half off of where the tile line needs to be. We've hit solid rock. Do y'all have a small machine with a hammer on it? How, 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 how quick can he come out here? <laughs> 